All right, welcome back to Pack Manufactured, a series all about Pac-Man clones. In this episode, we're looking at Dot Gobbler, developed for the Commodore 64 in 1983 and published by Mr. Computer Graphics, but not credited to an individual developer. Now, this one was recommended to me because it has some of the most terrifying artwork I think I've ever seen in my life. It features a cheeky sort of Pac-Man-like character with a little red nose and chubby cheeks, but also human arms and legs, which makes him look nude, and also he is being chased by just, like, bedsheet ghosts, which is uh, bizarre, to say the least. But the actual game itself is very much a Pac-Man clone in the traditional fashion, and yeah, it is very much what you'd expect from home computer Pac-Man clones of this era. They are trying to bring the game to a device unofficially but make a decent try of it and obviously just sort of circumnavigate any sort of copyright issues by ever so slightly changing some graphics or the character sprites. So they don't really look like Pac-Man or the ghosts. You can just about get away with not being sued, essentially. But, you know, giving players who have Commodore 64s or home computers a decent enough arcade equivalent of Pac-Man at home, and that's what this goes for. Now this is playable in two formats. You can have large mazes or small mazes. The large mazes I'm not the biggest fan of. Their design is... it does the thing that I really dislike and that's dead ends. I just really really dislike that. I feel like a Pac-Man game should always have a junction, always have an exit so that there's a constant movement and momentum to the action. And if you have to move down a corridor and hit a dead end, then that means you're always going to be boxed in at some point and, you know, inevitably get caught by a ghost. Whereas the best Pac-Man maze design will always give you an exit, always give you a junction, so that you can continue to move and continue to be, you know, on the run from the ghosts and play, and basically play the entire thing strategically. You can at least play it strategically in the fact that you have full view of the entire maze. It doesn't need to scroll at all, which is nice. It also doesn't have that horrible four-way turning where if you turn a direction while you're moving down a corridor and before you hit the junction, you won't just turn into the wall and stop in your path, you know? Like, it's always got that forward momentum, which is exactly what I want from a Pac-Man game. And this feels great in that regard. I, I really I really like that. The movement is a little stilted. You can see it's sort of like um, tile by tile, but honestly, you get used to it. It's not its not bad by any stretch of the imagination. It's just different. But you, yeah, you will get used to it, and it's fine enough. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, the large maze design just doesn't do it for me because of those dead ends. And as a result, I, I, I wouldn't recommend this style of maze personally. However, the small maze design really hits it out the park. So it basically eliminates all my complaints from the large maze designs. So there's no actual dead ends. Um, it's, yeah, you can see everything on screen at once, and it's a lot nicer to play. Now, the maze design isn't accurate to actual Pac-Man, but it's pretty close. The big thing is the small maze design just doesn't have dead ends. So as a result, it's a lot nicer to play. You've got that lovely Pac-Man momentum. You're always moving. You're always on the run. You're always trying to escape the ghosts, and, and you can see everything on screen, so you can play the entire game strategically as well. It's a real good time. Um, it's a pretty solid Pac-Man clone as a result, and it's the preferred way to play Dot Cobbler. If you're going to give this a go, then definitely play the small maze design over the large maze design. One of the things I also like is that you can change the gameplay speed as well. There are nine speeds and you basically select them before any game. You just press one to nine on the keyboard and that will determine the speed. One is the fastest, nine is the slowest. And yeah, you can sort of tweak it the way you want it. So if you if you like a nice fast game, then you can you can ramp it up real high. But if you want it to be a little bit more considered so that you have better character control, you can slow it down and it will accommodate you. So yeah, this is... <sighs> This is a pretty decent home computer port of Pac-Man, I've got to say. Like, alright, yes, it's not an official one, it is a clone. But, it's 1983, and if you've got a Commodore 64, then this is going to absolutely tick the boxes. Especially the small maze design, where it has the correct sort of map design with junctions and no dead ends. So yeah, it's just a nicer thing to play. The large maze design, on the other hand, is, you know, it's nice that it's there. At least there's something different and something uh, something else to experience outside of the standard maze layout. But uh, it's just not as well designed, especially with those dead ends. And as a result, I can't recommend that side of things. But I would recommend the small maze design. So 
yeah, I'm not going to give this one the pack manufactured seal of approval just because I feel like half the game isn't very good, but the other half is. So if you want to experience some decent Commodore 64 Pac-Man, then this will certainly tick the boxes if you select those small mazes. 